first of all, I love this take on a horror film because there's so many under underlining issues and underlying stories that involve this horror film that really just stood out to me, which just caught me by surprise. Like I didn't think of it being something this deep, but yet have such a great story for all of you. And we'll start with uh, Stephanie. What was it? <laughs> It's like it's gonna be like the price is right. We're just gonna go around. Um, <laughs> what was it like to be a to to just be a part of this project and really bring this project to life? Oh my gosh, it was a tremendous honor and like a complete joy. I think you know what initially attracted me to this project was, um, firstly, the character. I thought she was wonderfully and tragically complex. Um, and then the project, like the script itself, it's, um, we've talked about this a lot, you know, it's a horror, but it's, um, it's a fantasy. It's a familial drama. So, uh, you know, my favorite movies are those that don't fit so clearly into one box. And so the fact that it existed in all these different genres and aesthetics really appealed to me. Um, in terms of working, I think your question was working on this project. Yes. Um, yeah, it was a, a fantastic experience. I think, you know, everyone was, we were a family. It was a supportive environment. And I think like that's so essential when you have to go to some really dark and um, crazy places emotionally and physically, you know, without giving anything away. Like there's a lot of physical stuff too. So having this really, um, tight and talented team was was essential and it made it a joy to to work to work on it mm -hmm. michael well you use the word family and that's really what popped into my head because the story is about family and and then the we come on and the set is became very quickly a family we we're on a family farm hosted by a family so that was a lot of it. You know, some of it felt like home to me, too, because my mother grew up on a, a place not so dissimilar to uh, to the farm where we the movie was set. And uh, that that was really nice. And the camaraderie and th there's something about on a farm where everybody chips in. And uh, that was something that very much was true on this shooting set and that makes me feel at home i like that i don't like to, to be being waited on is fun from time to time but i like to chip in yeah gordon uh the one i want to switch up the question for you because for somebody who who has lost a parent the story really did hit a little differently that's why the story hits a little differently for me and those things that you go through as in the grieving process kind of there was a lot of things that touched upon it. How was it to to in the story and directing it and bringing this together to put that underlying because every horror has some type of basis of true fact that happened and that occurred, cool. even if it's fantasy horror. How was it to bring that and to bring that storytelling into this film? Well, you know, the first of all, sorry for very sorry for your loss. You know, uh, I. Uh, first and foremost, the you know the drama here was all all about particularly the you know the father and the daughter the, and then how that relationship is troubled and being rebuilt uh, and uh, and of course also you know, the mother has a very unique uh, place in this story both in its past and in its present without spoiling anything mm -hmm. um, and you know I tend to I often write stories dealing with you know pathological loss in some way. Um, and, um, I don't entirely know why every time I think that there are times where, um, you just, uh, you know, you know, it's important to you and you imagine how something that might affect you losing that. Um, and some of it is also then in inspired and you draw from the experiences of those close to you, which I, I do very often. Um, I think of, you know, people's experiences, uh, can be like everybody's almost you know you think of like lego sets you buy lego sets and you can take the lego set apart and use the pieces to build something new and so often you know again my a big resource for me is um people i can know on a very very deep 
deep level and ask, you know, any kind of questions you want sort of thing. And those are when you get those deep, deep truths. Those are the Lego pieces I really want to build things out of. Yeah. And I love the look of the film. I think you had a great cinematographer on this film and a Thank great you. colorist. Um, please tell us a little bit about the style of the film, what style you wanted to get out of it, because it has a very unique and particular type of style. Thank you. Yeah. The, um, we had two cinematographers because um, one's uh, uh, had a death in the family. So we, were, we shot for 16 days. Matt Basto shot the first 10. And then um, A.O. Balcon shot the last six, uh, which was, again, very a, a big thing for A.O. to not only come on and do a great job, but also to you know match the look. Um, and uh, yeah, we had the, the team at Ethos did the color, which were great. Uh, and they were very much in tune with what, you know, Matt um, saw in uh, this, the very specific photography, uh, which is a very, very technical conversation. Um, I mean, we're, it's we're, it sometimes can be either really interesting to those that are like really nerdy into photography uh when you just talk about how how you're using your shadows and your exposure uh and sometimes that can be super super boring so i don't know where you stand on like you know that but the um uh ultimately you know the look was based on things that i thought we, we that worked for our environments that that gave the right mood and uh you know we're also very uh, possible for something that had to be small and um yeah yeah yeah, I get very nerdy about all this stuff right. because I'm a. <laughs> as we're transitioning the company into doing more short films and feature films, in addition to our news outlet, I'm getting even more into this in another level that I'm just like, I see things that are different now. And I love the look on this film. I think it's really great. Stephanie, um, to encapsulate the role, what were some of the things you took to in order to get it? Because you, you did such a great job. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, I mean, I think my process was um, trying to find that, you, you know, Sylvia is dealing with a very heavy, heavy depression, right? She's going through some, some really dark, dark stuff. Um, my process was finding that piece of her struggle that I could genuinely relate to. Um, and then the rest of it just fell into place. Um, and I, I chalked that up to um, a really well-crafted script um, that, you know, gave me, gave me a lot on the page to work with in terms of building the character. Um, and then, you know, without, uh giving anything away you know she has a, a sort of different manifestation later in the film um and i think um working with gordon to 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 come up with you know vocal modulations and some physical changes mm -hmm. that would you know really create this dark presence what yeah. <laughs> part of the process um yeah and then you know the fun part of um costumes and 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 makeup mm -hmm. kind of tied it all together yeah and before i forget as we go on uh i'm sorry i forgot your name uh michael michael okay. summers no i know yours that, that's easy to remember but next to gordon elizabeth elizabeth yes <laughs> sorry about that i, I was like <laughs> i don't have names on here so it makes it easier uh, Elizabeth, to be a part of this project and to do this, what has that experience been like for you? Oh, it's been incredible. It's uh, it's one of the experiences of a lifetime. Because um, I, you know, have lived with this script since its inception. It's many different versions. It was born out of a lot of deep conversations over the years. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a... a doctor. I'm actually a doctor in sports medicine, but it, it's remarkable how, you know, the body presents itself and its traumas in different ways. And it, this, uh, this project came, a lot of the inspiration came from the conversations that we had where I was processing what I was seeing in the clinic, where someone would come in and what it was becoming more and more apparent was there are so many people coming to see me for, you know, something innocuous like a knee injury and knee pain 
But what I was seeing was that their whole bodies were moving in different ways because they were holding on to these past traumas. And so we we had, you know, worked through things. I did a lot of different research and understanding, and I had um, the privilege of working on a project uh, with a medical school where we were looking at how body, how to essentially how to read body language to understand what someone else was going through. And so we started looking at how we're holding our bodies and what does that mean? And um, and so that was an incredible experience. And then to be able to put that into actual practice of being doing the actual fighting it was first of all it was incredibly difficult I have so much respect for the people who do this on a regular basis um I don't know if you've ever tasted humble pie but it's a sharp teacher <laughs> there was some moment where I thought I was going to let the whole production down I was like I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this but uh, thankfully with uh, with the help of so many strong people and strong women around me um helping me through we uh you know we have a great production um and a in a big success but it it was it was incredibly incredible being able to put those lessons that we were learning put that into practice in such a huge way yeah and um as i get older i'm realizing the humble pie comes a little bit differently <laughs> as well because you you realize it a little bit more now as you're getting older yeah. <laughs> but to transition to the from that michael to play the father, to get into this role, because you do such, you, you do you do an amazing job as well, and you really believe that you believe it so much. I mean, what brought? How did you manifest manifest that character? Because it, it comes off so natural. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, you, you know, as Elizabeth is talking, I'm I'm thinking about trauma, and and I'm thinking of the word in my head is actually a f is fear and you know this is a horror film so you're thinking fear of the demon but i think in my case it was the fear of myself and also my daughter uh was she going to lash out at me and um i always use the word i always think about arrogance and i found that i my own arrogance and my own self-centeredness um it, that never runs um false in a character it's like oh people have a lot of that in them it meaning that now i'm doing the right thing and or i'm trying to and i will tell my daughter that and she'll just be like oh thank you so much and we'll li live happily ever after and that it doesn't, it's not as simple as that. It didn't work out. She actually mistook what I told her is the, like the complaints of like an aggressive, you know, I'm a made up scenario here. Uh, but thinking of those situations in, in very small increments was how I was trying to do it. Meaning she comes to my house. What am I feeling? And move, take it one step at a time from there. Yeah. And before I let you go, I got to let Gordon uh, get the last word on this one, because it's such a great film that you don't realize how much time has flown already. And I'm almost done with my time. <laughs> but Gordon, please tell everybody, how can they watch it? Are, is it going to be in, is it going to get a little theater run? Is it going to get uh, is it going straight to streaming? Please tell people how they could watch yeah. it. For for movies our size, our theater runs are like the film festivals themselves. Um, but the at this stage, yeah, we're now in that the the rent or buy um, part, and you can you know pre order us, which would be a pre order buy on Apple TV. Uh, we release June eleventh. Really anywhere you can rent or buy something, you know, from Amazon to Apple to you know Direct TV, Comcast, etc. Uh, so yeah, and then you can follow at Wild Eyed and Wicked on Instagram, and that's you know at Wild on underscore eyed underscore you know and underscore wicked uh so yeah come and uh, check it out awesome. first before i let you go congratulations on the film to all of you i thank you. it was something that i didn't expect going in and then when i got through it i just kept going deeper deeper and deeper into it and it's a really really good film congratulations to you all and if you want to watch it please go into wherever you like to uh purchase your uh movies thank you sir no problem. Thank, Thank you. you Michael. Thank you.